Hi guys and welcome to episode 3 of the Deep Dive with me, Peter Nardi. Now today we are going to be speaking to someone I've known for, for a lot of years, a very, very talented magician. He's got his own magic venue in Spain. He's a three times FISM award winner. I mean, how many people could say they're one time, let alone three times? And not only that, he is one of the nicest guys in magic. He is a phenomenal magician and creator obviously i'm talking about the legend mr matthew or matt right hey, how are nice. you thank you very much peter i'm all right mate how are you i'm very good i've got to ask you this it's the worst question in the world what's the weather like because you're in spain right well I've, yeah i'm in the shed at the minute i've just walked down from the house Right. There was a cloud. Studio, not it's shed. A little bit windy. Yes, it, I call it the shed, otherwise I have to pay tax on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a. There was a cloud, and it was a little bit windy, so oh. not good here today. Oh, but it's about twenty three degrees. We're all right. We're all right. Jeez. I still might get in the pool later. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, I mean, you've done. So I don't know when we first. Matt, I remember the day we met, but I, I don't remember what year it was or anything else. But we've known each other for a for a long time. I introduced myself outside the Winter Gardens in Blackpool to you in about I think it was two thousand eight, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, something like that. Yeah. And then we, I, I showed you the 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 floating coin trick, the horizon, uh, and then we we put out the unusual suspect together, which I think was about two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Which was maybe. a phenomenal DVD. It had your Kawasaki's opener on it, which is just a killer. Absolutely. Yeah, killer. I still just, use it. It's a great trick. It, it's honestly, it's just hit after hit after hit. It, it's it's phenomenal. Um, and you had your, um, I don't know what you called it. Do you remember the Listerine effect? Yeah, um, I just called it Mint. Yeah, it was a great. I was gutted when they stopped making those little packets because that was yeah. such a strong trick. I've been yeah. looking around for little substitutes of how to bring that back, but I, I just can't find anything suitable. But yeah, that mint trick was amazing. That, I'm glad that, you remembered that. It was one of my favourites. I did that for years. Yeah, it, it was phenomenal. Really, really good. So you've got your own venue now in Spain. So this is. So tell us a bit about it. Where is it? What is it? Well, I've got the, the Chamber of Secrets Theatre in Torremolinos on the Costa del Sol. So flying to Malaga, it's about 10, 15 minutes from there. We're always getting magicians coming over. We've got to add quite a lot of, uh, lot of famous magicians come over and see the show. It's an all-inclusive show. It runs for about three hours. You get all your drinks, all your, uh, all your wine, soft drinks, sangria. That's all included in the price. It's uh, a show split into three halves. It's a magic show. We can do what we want. So we have three halves. Uh, we've got like a... a comedy half in the first half then we have more serious mentalism and mind reading and then the third half is like general magic illusions so do sleight of hand they do my physic act and things like that in the third half so it's about about a three hour show run five nights a week in the summer and with, wow. the, with the number one thing to do on trip advisor for the whole of the area for the whole of andalusia we got shortlisted for the whole of spain the top five in spain of tourist wow. attractions so we're really proud of that yeah i mean i know how hard you've worked on this so is it do you have guest magicians so i know um tom's out there uh, or used to be out there a lot with you yeah tom tim, tom came out when we opened it he helped set up and he stayed for two years and then came back and did a few little weeks in between before uh he moved on to much bigger and better things he's <laughs> he's cruising the world now but yeah tom, tom kind of did i wouldn't say an apprenticeship yeah i would say an apprenticeship I, we we took him under our wing and he learned all about lights and sound and theatre and all that sort of thing. And we worked yeah. on his act and developed his character for a couple of years. We've had uh, Dean Lahan over there wow. uh, for a couple of seasons, the Fingerless Magician. He was, he went down a storm. We've had Victor Pena over there. And we've had a few guys coming over just doing guest spots a few weeks at a time. But, yeah, we've had, we've had plenty of good guys over, yeah. And it, it, it's such a... Um, for, for anyone, like you said, with Tom and, and people like that... For, for anyone that's putting an act together, having a venue that they can perform in seven nights a week, I mean, you cannot, you can't buy that sort of experience. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's not, most 100%. magicians, 
you, you've got like a little stage show or a little parlor set or whatever. You're going to do it, what, once a month? Yeah, and it, exactly. you, you come out there and you're doing it like every day or twice a day or whatever it is, constantly. By the time you finish that, it's going to be spot on. I mean, that's Yeah, incredible. absolutely. And I'm, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist as well. So I'll go out and I'll watch the show. And as soon as they come off stage, I'll give them feedback and things to tweak next time. And then you're going back the next... We do one show a night. So you're going back the next day and you, you're trying to improve it. So you're constantly going. I mean, the flight time there is amazing. And it's yeah. the same with Rodney at the House of Illusion. He's doing two shows a night. That's where I kind of did my apprenticeship, if you will. I did seven years at the House of Illusion. And that was, again, that was flight time, two shows a night five six nights a week and, and the amount of stage time and, and time that you get doing it you just can't help but improve yeah no it's great it's great and to have someone you know like you said to have someone like you or rodney that's helping them you know improve that act i mean you know you're you're a three times fism award winner you can't really ask for much more i don't think well, I, 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 I have people coming over and I, I do charge for like, we do a week's masterclass and I'll, I'll charge for one-on-one -on -one tuition. But the guys who come over and, and work for us, obviously they're getting a, a three or four month period and they're getting that every single night. So yeah, they, yeah. they, they come out much better. And Tom's really gracious with his, his praise of, of what he learned. I think he did most of the work himself, but he, he does credit me with, with, with helping him. Yeah. Oh, well, I didn't know about the masterclass. I mean, that's... Fantastic. And anyone that's watching this that, that wants to improve their act. So I take it they have an act, they come over, they show you the act, and, and you just tweak and tune and direct. Yeah, it's, it's usually something I do in, in the winter times, and they'll come over for a week, stay in a, hol in a hotel, and then we'll go into the chamber every every day and we'll work on the act, we'll script it, and we'll, we'll routine it, and, and just put my little twist on things, really. We've had a few guys come over and do that who... who I think I've, I've learned from it. Yeah, it's a good experience. That's great. That's great. So anyone interested, get in touch with Matt. Um, that's an opportunity that you shouldn't be passing up. Um, the, the other thing I want to mention, especially about you, <clears throat> um, when you present magic, I mean, in, in the recent years, I would say presentation in magic has seemed to have vanished quite a bit. Uh, and I'm not saying that negatively. I'm just saying it. It is a fact. Um, I know that when I present magic, sometimes, all right, a two-minute trick might go on for five minutes, but I do like to put some presentation into it. And I know you're the same. I mean, you've got characters um, that, that you will perform as, and everything has got a presentation. It's a very modern feel in the way magic was performed with presentation and, and engaging the audience with a story as well with a lot of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, I did try to keep it relevant and, and as you say, modern. Um, Eugene Berger and Jeff McBride were both my mentors. I went to live in Chicago and studied with Eugene and I've, I've studied with Jeff many, many times and they were both great storytellers. So that's been a massive influence on me. But I have tried to bring it a little bit more up to date and, and do it with my character and that's that's the way i like to do it. but a lot of people look at the way that i'm and when they when they're looking at my releases and things say oh i couldn't do that because i haven't got that character you're right a lot of people don't perform with character which isn't a bad thing at all a lot of the youtube magicians are, are killing it you know i've got no yeah. problems with that new genre that's popped up I, I mean people some young kids can can get more views in in one video than i've had my entire career so they must be doing something right. I don't, I don't, I don't knock YouTube magic or, or social magic at all. I think it's a great new thing. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's nice to, you know, when you go and watch a magician, for me, and, and maybe it is my age, maybe I'm just getting on now, because when I started in magic, obviously presentation was the thing. You, you would go out there and you would, you would present it. And especially when you're... Like, you're right. I, I think the new genre with regards to YouTube and shorts and everything else, it's got to be under a minute, a lot of it. Got to be under a minute, hit it hard. And it's like Harry does YouTube videos every single day. And sometimes it's really hard to, to get the trick in to that minute. You've literally got to cut out all your presentation. Here's a card, watch this, bang, it's at the top. 
And yeah, then that's exactly. it. That's your presentation. Exactly. Um, I, but, I, but I mean, it's, it's working for them and they're doing well for it. So it's, you can't take that away from them. But again, doing it live, I think it's two completely different genres yeah. now. We get, we get families coming to the show now and they're like, I've never seen our kid off his phone for so long. You know, the, the, yeah. the, they put the phones down and, and they sit there and they're mesmerized for, for two or three hours. And they said they've never seen that. It's just not something that they do. Even when they sat in front of the TV, they're on the phones and things. Yeah. But when you come to the theatre, I make sure you put your phones down um, and, and you watch the show. And they say, like I said, they, it's the first time that their kids have sat there quiet without the phones for two or three hours. So That's we must brilliant. be doing something right. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So the the idea of the deep dive is I'm going to speak to creators about their latest product and it's a chance for you to, to really put across why this effect is so good. Now I've seen this effect. I saw the original um, when you released it. I know you've been doing Torn and Restored for ever since I've known you. You've been doing Torn and Restored of various different elks. Um, this one is yeah, when I saw the trailer, I, I just thought, how bloody clever is that? that it, it's so cool. So Yeah, cool. I mean, you're right. I have been doing tournament stores for a long time. I, I spent a lot of time doing Reformation with Guy Hollingworth, and then I developed Ripper, which was a mismade card. And yeah. then I developed D4M, which is is like the, the, the father of, of Beyond Reform. And I went to, to Blackpool. Everyone loved D4M. It was a great little giveaway, but it was very difficult to do. It was based on the Reformation, so it's very technical, and a, yeah. not a lot of people could do it. So I was working on a simplified version, a simplified handling. I went to Blackpool Convention last year and bumped into Elliot Gerrard, who's a, talking about social media magic. Elliot's smashing it on social media. And he said, uh, can you show me a car? Can I show you my version of D4M? And he did it. And right then I thought, this is the greatest card. This is the greatest torn and restored card trick I've ever seen. It, it blew me away. He's cleanly tearing it up. It's very open, free hands. Uh, you then get all four pieces signed by four different people. Yeah. And then you put it back together and all the edges are torn. And I mean, I've, I've got one that I've just take a look at it. Wait for that to uh, that in. looks great. I mean, I, the, the fact that four pieces are signed as well. And the fact that it goes together. I, I watched um, a full performance, like uncut performance of you doing this. Um, and it, for a torn and restored card, it just makes so much sense. A, a normal torn and restored card is great. You know, don't get me wrong. You're restoring it. But you make a valid point. At the end, when they show their friends, it's just the card. Their friends yeah. may believe it was torn, may not. This is... Yeah, exactly. It's a card that's just been put back together. This is proof and evidence that it, that it is torn and restored. Yeah. It, it honestly, I, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's a phenomenal idea. Why don't we drop the trailer, and then we'll come back and okay. talk about it a bit more? And I'll I have got a few questions for you because I haven't done this yet, but I really want to do it, and Harry really wants to do it. So I've got a few questions for you when we come back. So let's take a look at this. Wicked. No. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
There's a thing called a double neck. You have a double neck? <laughs> that, that's a double neck. Two tears. In a moment, one card's going to go from here to here and vice versa. Two cards basically swapping places. <laughs> <laughs> Tear this up. At least you said you can't shuffle cards, so you can shuffle cards. Give these a little shuffle up for me then. Mix them up as best you can. Just write something on there for me. Anything you want on there? Slowly open your hand. Is so cool, so cool. Cheers, Pete. Yeah, I, I mean, I love it. I, I genuinely, I, I did a build up. I did a ten day build up, like a countdown to release of that trailer, uh, and I did a different claim every day. And I, I, the first claim that I made was, "This is the greatest torn restored card ever." It's, a, it's my humble opinion, but I, I truly believe it does. I don't think there's anything does anything like this. And the fact that it's signed by by four people. I mean, Elliot has a handling where. The front and back are signed by eight different people, which is taking yeah. it again to another level. I, I love it. I, I perform it constantly every day at the at the show. I'm I'm doing it outside on, on the streets when I welcome the guests. It's it's one of my favourite tricks of, of all time for sure. Well, I, it's something that really appeals to me. I mean, I I don't perform professionally anymore. I haven't done for for a few years, but. Um, it's something that I still perform when I'm out and about, and this is something that will seriously fit into what I do. Um, it, it, yeah, it just ticks every box. And I know when Harry saw it, Harry's out performing now, he's gigging, and it is just a perfect effect to do, especially in a mix and mingle situation. You can get everyone involved. Exactly, 100%. And again, on, on the tables, if you're doing it around the tables, getting the eight people to sign it. So you've got a table of 10, you get eight people to sign it, and two people do the do the restoration work. So you can include all 10 on the table. It, it, it's really, really perfect for all situations, really. Even on a stage, you can you can see the visual of it. You know what's happening with it. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's super, super easy to do. So okay, There are a few let... different handlings with it. On, on the trailer, the, the, the last few, the little flash, flash restorations, you'd need to practice a little bit. But the actual yeah. meat and bones of both mine and Elliot's routines, the restoration's super, super simple. There's nothing to it. So let, let's, talk about, um, let's talk about skill level for a moment. So we all know sort of how, how you get into it, a card selected and, and torn up. Um, so if I was uh, a beginner, and I, I totally understand what you're saying, the flash restorations and the, the visual stuff, there is going to be um, some practice there, as, as you would expect. Um, but to do the bog standard routine, having only four pieces signed, not eight, I presume almost anyone can do that. With the structure of the routine, there's no slight. I would say from day one, 
a day one beginner could pick this up and, and get started with it. I mean, you don't even need to force a card. Right. Uh, there are ways where you can just nick because it's the the deck itself comes with all all the court cards. The yeah. graphs is, is every court card, so you can just ask them to name any court card. So you don't even need to force a card. Just ask them to name any court card, pull it out, and you can get into it that way. Um, the actual moves themselves, there well, there aren't any really. There's, That's great. There's, I mothing, mean... to, there's there's so little to do. You have to remember. Well, for my routine, the way that I do it, I have to re remember a sequence. But Elliot doesn't even use the sequence in his. Right. But that, that's, so, um, with yeah. most tricks, most self-working tricks, there's still a sequence. There, there is yeah. some. A self-working trick is not a self-working trick. You, you've you got to be in the game to do it. You know, there, there's going to be a sequence. You're going to have to rehearse it. Self-working doesn't mean you're going to take it out of the box and do it in two minutes with the greatest presentation and everything. You've still got to practice yeah. a self-working trick. The trick will do the, you know, most of the work for you, but you've yeah, still the, got to put the, something like, into it. We were talking about performance, weren't we? And, and that's that's the bit that you'll that will take time to come for for a newbie, for a, for a beginner to get that flight time, to get those nerves out of the way. That's that's the difficult part of doing magic, and that's going to be the same for whatever trick a beginner picks up. But yeah. slight wise and difficulty wise, any level can can pick this up and watch the watch the tutorial. Sit there for an hour, and an hour later, they'll be, they'll be able to go out and do the trick for sure. Uh, it, it honestly. I, I love it. As a Ton and Restore card, I love it. I've always loved things like the Mismade Bill. It's just, it gives you a bit of interest. It gives the spectator a bit of interest. And when they see that card go back together, their mind is going to be blown. I mean... 100%. It's, it's such a great talking piece. I ha you, one downside on the trick is you have to do it really as a closer. Yeah. Because if you do this in the middle of your set, everyone's no one's paying attention to the rest of your thing. They're all just passing the card around and looking at it and examining it. There's so I, I went to Benidorm to film the trailer for this, and I was filming for another trick as well. And I did this one first, and then I'm, I'm trying to do the other trick, and no one's paying attention at all. They're yeah. all just trying to look at this card and examine it. So, yeah, it's so strong. It's such a great talking point, especially for cocktail parties and dinner parties and going around the tables and stuff. This will be passed around. The only issue you might get is they might start to fight over who's going to keep it. It's such a great souvenir. It's an anniversary waltz. It's a, it's a torn and restored card. It's just a super, super giveaway. I've never really understood when you, you, you take a card out of your wallet or something that's signed this here, you can keep that as a souvenir. It's like, yeah. It's just a card with, with their name on it. it. It means nothing. At least if you're going to do that, sign your name on the bottom before you yeah. give it as a souvenir. But this thing, this is just something that they will definitely want to keep forever. It's, it's, yeah. it's a work of art, really. And it's um, it's self-explanatory, isn't it? When they show it to someone, you don't have to explain what's happened. Straight away, they're going, what the is that? You know, what on yeah, earth happened there? I don't remember who said the quote. They said, if you can... Uh, explain a, a trick in in a sentence or less it's a great trick yeah you don't even need a sentence with that you can just show it yeah yeah that's it as soon as you you show it they know you know it's not normal um it it's great so you get all the court cards there so um obviously yeah. when you perform this uh you are using a card every time but they are very uh keenly priced as well so they're not super expensive um you've kept the price pretty low i would say for a for a trick that would get you this much impact yeah i've, I've done my best to keep it low because the the deck itself is the refills you you are destroying yeah. a card so you are going to need refills so the deck is the refills itself so we tried to keep that in mind with with the pricing as well so that you're not you're not having to pay out loads every time you want to refill it so yeah, uh, yeah i think it, it is it's very competitively priced and that's done for for good reason because we yeah. want people to to do this we don't want it in the box and draw we want it to become part of people's working repertoires and going out and doing it every night yeah and it is um it is something that people are going to do that's that's the thing it's not one of these tricks like i mean like i said i've seen you do torn and restored cards before that use so much sleight of hand that i wouldn't even attempt to tear the card let alone put it back together 
But with um, with this one, this is something that people are actually going to do. And it's most probably one of the best tournament restore cards I've ever seen with regards to how the card ends up. Maybe even the best. And it's one that's achievable by everyone. It, I, I think... It it, it ticks all the boxes for me, and that's that's why I was so excited to release it. And when Elliot showed me, I knew that we were onto something. It, like you say, it's super super simple. It's super visual. Um, it gets everybody involved. It's a great souvenir. It's a great kicker. That's an important point. This is something that Mark Ellison came up with. Um, if you're doing a, a tour or like I do Reformation anyway, and I, I, yeah. I'm not going to dump that. I'm never going to dump that. And that's where the uh, the convincer comes in as a kicker to the tone and restore that you already do. You take the card back and say, no one's going to believe that that was tone and restored. So we'll do it again. And I'll give you some evidence that it is tone and restored. And then they go home with this. So it's, if you can Beautiful. use this as a standalone piece, or you use it as a kicker to the tone and restore that you've already get. And it works beautifully both ways. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, Elston's a, a clever cookie. And, and that's a great way to do it if you can already do something like Reformation or, or something like that. It, it's a great way as a convincer. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really... Yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about it. it. It's great. Now, I did read somewhere that there is a setup. Um, now, this is a, a, a setup that happens before you go out, right? It's not nothing you've got to do in front of them or anything else. No, you have to prep the card. You have yeah. to prep the card itself. Um, you have to pre-fold it. If you want these little torn edges on, you're going to have to put those on. It doesn't take long to do it, and it's well worth the effort, but you don't have to. If, if you come straight out of the pack, you're going to get with it, come with a card like that. Yeah. Uh, this is after it's been uh, altered. You just a little bit of a scissors, just score the edge, and, and then fold it up, and you can clip this onto your, your Sharpie pen, and, and you're ready to go. Yeah, and and the thing is, like you said, you don't have to do that because it, it will be a clean joined card. But it's worth the effort, and it's one of those things that you take 15, 20 minutes, you've done the whole pack, and, and you've got them for, you know, for, for your next exactly. 12, that, 15 that's gigs. That's what I say. Sit down in front of a, an episode of Coronation Street, and by the time it's finished, you'll have done the deck and you'll be ready to go. Yeah, and it's great, and it's always worth. When I I was performing, there was two tricks that I had to to set up, and I know at the time I'd go, oh, I've got to go make all these up the day before. But the impact those tricks got me made it worth the while. I I think a lot of um, a lot of magicians have, have not got a bit lazy, but we, we don't really get tricks now where you, you've got to set up, you just push the button and it, it does this, that and the other. Yeah. But it's always worth putting that little bit of time in and you do them all at once. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think it's worth the extra. If, yeah. if, you do, if you're not bothered about those torn edges, I've just set that one up there. That one's ready to go without the torn edges. That one is. Yeah. It's still a great trick. But yeah. with these torn edges, it just takes it to another level. So if yeah. you don't have the time and you don't want to spend it, you can. I mean, they're printed to look torn anyway. Torn anyway, if, yeah. If that's going to Yeah, fit. you can yeah, see the, that. The printing and, looks, yeah. And the thing is, all you have to do is fold them, reverse fold them, fold them, and you're going to start getting those frays naturally anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, if, if you don't want to go to the trouble and, and, and take the extra minute to do that then you don't have to but for me i think it's well worth it yeah i i think it's i think it's really worth the effort but they've got the choice they've got the choice whether they yeah, they want to exactly. or, or not um but i think it's it's really worth that extra minute and i think the reaction you'll get is worth that extra minute of your time you know um 100 yeah, it, it's such a great trick. Now, before we wrap up, is there anything else you want to say about it? Um, well, the only thing I would say is, is 
get it quickly because we're selling out really fast and it's going to be it's going to take two or three months before we can do a reprint so they are selling yeah. very very quickly uh we started off with with a good bunch and, and we're down to the bare bones now so i know that you're you've got some in stock today i think you've got uh some. yeah we got some in today and um we've got some from the the second batch of murphy's murphy's put it on pre-sale and they sold out on pre-sale didn't they so i mean yeah, that's it's, how it's sold quickly out. It's only twice on pre-sale and it's close to selling out again. I've got enough stored to restock them one more time and then that'll be it for, for two or three months. So if you do fancy it, if it is something that you want, then don't sit about. Yeah, and uh, this is something I don't say very often with a trick, but if this is something that you really want to do and I know you're going to want to do it, treat yourself to, to three or four packs because you yeah know, absolutely it, it's, it, it's something you don't, you don't want to get it in your working repertoire and then and and then have a sell out and have to wait another month before you can get it back in so it is a good yeah. a, a good thing to, to stock up yeah for sure yeah i know harry's going to be stocking up on them because it, it, it is a great one and i'm sure anyone that performs it just once will never perform without it i i'm excited yeah, I think to so. um I'm excited to start doing it because it, it just fits. Well, like you said, it ticks every single box, every single box, and it will fit anywhere. Um, even though you said it's, it's a closer, which it is, but you can use your regular deck all night. And then whenever you're ready, you can just go into this. And yeah, I, I think 100%. that's superb. Absolutely superb. Um, well, Matt, I, I want to thank you for joining us on the deep dive and being so open about the effect. It is a killer effect. And um, before we go, is there um, any little tidbits or secrets you want to share with us um, with regards to forthcoming products? What are you working on? Are you working on anything? Is there anything new for I'm, Blackpool? I'm hoping to have six or seven new things for Blackpool, yeah. Um, wow. Some of them have just got lost by UPS in the post this morning, <laughs> so I'm hoping that we can find those before they get there. But I've got some really <clears throat> cool things coming out. Yeah, so uh, make sure you come and see us by the stand, and I should have five or six new things there for you. I always um, pop by your stand because you always freak me out with something. So um, I'll, I'll well, be that, popping by. We're, we're one of the few guys who, who actually perform on the stands. We do little shows there. So I know that there's not a lot of people who, who are deming properly anymore. So yeah, uh, we, we're always busy at the stands. So come along and, and see a show. Good stuff. So um, obviously, after you've been to Alakazam, pop over and see Marvelous Effects. Is it still Marvelous Effects? Yeah. Yeah, we're still Marvelous Effects. Yeah. 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 So um, make sure they're your second port of call after you've spent hey. all your money. <laughs> Look at that. I'll be popping over, mate. I, I really can't wait there to see what you're bringing to the table. I know it's going to be phenomenal. Brilliant. So, Cheers, Peter. Thank you very much for having me. And thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. And um, let's hear it. Everyone at home as well, give uh, Matthew Wright a big round of applause. But not only being one of the nicest guys in magic, but also one of the best magicians in magic and one of the best creators. And everything he puts out is a worker because he works them all the time. So, Matt, once again, thank you so much for joining us on the Deep Dive. And I will see you at Blackpool. Cheers, Peter. See you there, buddy. Cheers, mate. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this week's Deep Dive. Um, next week, we are back with another product where we're going to be delving in and showing you exactly what it is and explaining why we think it's so good. And you'll notice on the Deep Dive, we are only covering items that we believe you should put your attention to, items that we believe you will use. Um, so join us every Sunday on the Deep Dive. Um, where we will be sharing some of the best magic to hit the Alakazam shop. So until next week. Ah, one thing I didn't say, and Harry will kill me. If you haven't done so already, remember to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Get that done and you'll be notified every time we go live with Deep Dive. So until next week.
Have a good one. Bye.